Welcome to I Love to Tell the Story, the podcast for the Narrative Lectionary with me, Joy J. Moore. And me, Christopher Fan Kaufman. So today we've got a double podcast episode for you. And what we mean by that is that this podcast will cover two days in the Narrative Lectionary. That's Christmas Eve and then Christmas Day, because in the Narrative Lectionary, they both deal with Luke chapter 2. So Christmas Eve is the first part, Luke chapter 2, 1 through 14, and then they overlap a little bit. Christmas Day is 8 through 20. But we're going to be talking about both of those texts together in one day because it's Christmas after all, and these are the, the same texts that people hold so dear, that Luke chapter 2. So we begin, um, in uh, those days, a decree went out, and it went out from the emperor, but uh, I want to announce that there is no more important announcement than the one that we hear from, uh, here made to um, um, Mary and Joseph, um, that she gave birth to her firstborn son. Uh, that is the announcement, not the announcement that they're supposed to go and be registered. That came from the emperor, and that was important news. But the critical important news is this announcement of this sign of a child being born, which is uh, Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. And I begin you there and just a reminder that uh, when you're thinking about this one way homiletically that you can go is just to position those two ideas together. The announcements that we hear um, through social media, through our news, and the announcement that is revealed to us through this living word of scripture. And they are not the same, even though they come at the same time. Yeah, that's great. And I love that you pointed that out, especially with response to this decree from Caesar Augustus. We talked a little bit when we talked about Ezra, about this way of using different events or different people to set the time. Mm -hmm. In Ezra, it was in the first year of King Cyrus of Persia. Here we have mm -hmm a decree from Caesar Augustus. And we get this funny little note when Quirinius was governor of Syria, just for all of you who remember good old Quirinius, I suppose you might say. But yeah. the funny part about this, and the part that I think we sometimes lose, because of course, we don't remember what Caesar Augustus was like. We don't remember who Quirinius was. But this is trying to say to us, not just here is a date, like a November the 10th, 2023. But remember what life was like when Caesar Augustus was giving us decrees. Remember what life was like when that guy Quirinius was our governor of all of Syria. And it's in the midst of that life under the Roman Empire, under Caesar Augustus and his uh, delegates, that's when this announcement of great joy comes out. And so, yeah, don't just take that as a date, but you got to remember this was a, a not just a change for the world in the sense that Caesar Augustus was the first Roman emperor. The world had changed yes. and it changed not just for Rome, but it changed for the people here in Judea too. And that's what they're trying to remind you of when they start there. Yeah. But then they're talking about an even bigger change. And that's what Joy was pointing out to us as well. And pairing those two together um, helps us to understand that um, we don't need to quarrel over accuracy of dates. What actual date was Jesus born in? No. What we need to do is to remember the significance and uh, the world-altering reality that God would keep God's promise. Um, that the days of waiting are over. Um, and those days are prominent days uh, in the sense that they are the days of waiting of a woman waiting for the birth of a child. <laughs> um, very real understanding of what it means to wait. And so we conclude our season of Advent with the arrival. Um, and um, that day will come again. Uh, when God's promise is completely fulfilled. But for the moment, let's see what a glimpse of that promise looks like. 
And uh, what we see uh, uh, I, uh, as we move through now looking at verse eight, um, that the audience changes. So we've been um, among a Jewish family in the temple. We've been um, among a faithful descendant of the uh, house of David. And now, what? This announcement is going to be made out in the fields to some workers, to some shepherds? And you have to understand that Luke does a wonderful job of showing us the difference in people, the distinction between um, the folks that are on the inside and the folks that are on the outside. And there's nothing more clear than those who are shepherds in the field. That's the lowliest of jobs that you could do. Um, and yet that's who receives the angel's announcement. And uh, I just have to say this because I said it last week uh, with Zachariah. You're just sitting there on a nice hillside. You're watching your flock, counting stars, maybe playing Mancala. I don't know if they played Mancala back then, but yeah, maybe. <laughs> so, I don't know. It's a good question. I don't know how old that game is, but it's old. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, an angel is speaking to you about the glory of God. I think you're going to be terrified. Yep. <laughs> and there it is again. The angel says, hey, it's all right. <laughs> don't be afraid. Come on. <laughs> Every time that happens, and it happens over and over again in the biblical narrative, it's going to happen at the end of Jesus' life. Yep. I still find that to be an incredible scene. But I also think it's an incredible way for us to recognize that when God shows up, it is always an awe inspiring moment awe inspiring moment yep no oh, amazing and i think that too there's something so special about this because like you said the the fact of the matter is in the ancient world they didn't have fences they right. didn't have fences around to keep a sheep in the place and so you had people who their whole lives were spent just following a flock of sheep around and people you know this was not a highly educated job, as you might expect. But notice, that's precisely Luke's point, is yes. that you don't have to be highly educated. You don't have to have spent the entirety of your life studying the scriptures yes. to all of a sudden understand what is going on. And that's the beauty of it, that it's not restricted to this sort of higher caste of religious elites who get to understand what has happened today. But instead it's these shepherds out in the field who get that message. So I think it's just, a, it's an amazing story in that way. And there's something noteworthy that uh, we don't often pay attention to is the lowliness of this job is everyone else has gone uh, back home mm -hmm. uh, to register. Mm -hmm. Somebody's got to watch those flocks and that's who these guys are. And yet that's, who the announcement is made to. And they are inspired. They know what's happening. Yeah. And the wonderful thing too, so you'll notice in our text today, that we run through chapter or verse 14, but then there's also that extra section 15 through 20, which occurs on the Christmas day. And do take a look at that because what do we see? It's not just that they hear it and then right. they stay with their sheep. Right. They are inspired and they go say, well, this is good news. Let's go see it. And I think that the reaction is the other thing Luke wants you to see. Absolutely. That in some ways they're not, they're not jaded. They're not cynical. They're not, uh, they're not saying, well, I'm not really sure. Instead they say, what a wonderful thing. Let's go take a look. And I think that's uh, a, another really beautiful thing that we can pull out of the story. Absolutely. Um, it, it is critical uh, to find out what it is that when, that throughout all of these stories now, when people, well, it's always been true. When people encounter the living God, they don't just go, oh, that was sweet. <laughs> Pass me another, you know, Coke. It, it's yeah. not. It's, it's like, I've got to do something in response to this. Yeah. I've got to go investigate Thank you, Moses, for checking mm -hmm. out that burning bush. 
Um, I've got to go tell somebody. Um, or in Zachariah's case, as soon as I get my voice back, I'm just going to say some praises. Yeah. And again, I love that you brought Zechariah again, too, because here we see in Luke chapter two, we got another song. We've got yes. the song of the angels, which in a lot of Christian traditions is a, has been set to music, this glory mm -hmm. to God in the highest. Mm -hmm. And that's the sort of thing. This is an event that leads all of heaven to sing, not just to one person who's singing God's praise, but all of heaven. And so I, I love that Luke, especially in these first two chapters, over and over again, we see that work of God mm -hmm. and we see people bursting out and hear the heavens bursting out in song to celebrate the work that God is doing. And so it's very appropriate. We sing. We sing on yeah. Christmas and the, some of the best loved songs that people know are around the Christmas story. So I think we mm -hmm. should celebrate that. Indeed. So shall we turn to Christmas now so yeah. we can keep diving into these verses? Yeah, we see in the Christmas. So, you know, again, we're saying in, in Luke chapter 2, it starts, as we said, with Caesar Augustus and with the registration and the travel of the Holy Family up to Bethlehem. Mm -hmm. And again, if you didn't read it on Christmas Eve, we really encourage you to take a, a good look at verses 15 through 20, which is the part yes. that... Uh, is the response of the shepherds. And we also get this wonderful, it's one of my wife's favorite verses, Luke 2, 19. Mm -hmm. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. And there is that way in which we have been given this treasure in these words of the gospel. And what they deserve is to be pondered, to be lived with, to be held in our hearts and thought about and prayed on and meditated on. And so I encourage you as you uh, go about preparing for Christmas, even though it's a busy season, mm -hmm. we know that. And especially so because it's a uh, Christmas Eve is on a Sunday this year. Sunday, so. Yeah. But to ponder these words and treasure them in your hearts as you get ready to preach on these days. And I appreciate that um, in the recognition that there are different responses to the encounter with God. And uh, those who, um, the shepherds, they go off, they praise, they announce, they, they, they first they seek and find, mm -hmm. and then, and then they, they come back rejoicing. Um, and we don't know what happens with them. We might properly assume that some of them will be those who will encounter Jesus uh, 30 years later and are the first to follow. I mean, that, that, that would make sense. But we do know what happens with his mom. We know what happens with Mary. She continued to think and meditate on these things. And so when her boy grew up, she could recognize God's action in him because she'd been thinking about them over and over again. That's how we recognize when God shows up, when we're meditating on the words that he has already given to us. Amen to that. And I love it because it, 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 that really goes with this verse 20 here at the end. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. It's yes. not that it just kind of randomly happened to them. No, the no. angels came and told them what God was doing. Yes. And because they were told about it, that's why they could see it. Yes. And that's the amazing part that we yes. sometimes miss. We sometimes expect that God is going to show up in ways that we haven't been told about, that we won't be able to recognize it when God shows up. But here we see that as they were told, they recognized and gave thanks for the fact that they could recognize it. So I just love that. I do. That is exactly how we recognize God. That's why we do what we do. Mm. We tell these stories of old so that we know how God shows up so that we are able to recognize when God shows up again, yeah. because God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Amen. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs>